Hey everyone, Aussie Viking here, and um, this is a new one, of course. Every now and then I like to do a different video, and I'm doing one now, and uh, it's about tattoos. It's how I get them, it's what I mean for them, and it's how I keep them clean. First of all, I'm a guy with tattoos. It's pretty obvious. I'm a metalhead, rah rah rah. You can see them right now, you know, and here, you know, tattoos. So, quick overview of the tattoos I have. That was my first one, Tia, one of my favorite bands, um, one of my favorite Norse gods, but. It was before, this was my first tattoo, and it was before the time that I thought, okay, hey, how do I want to go about it? I've changed since then, a little bit. So this arm and this side of my body is usually going to be for music and stuff, and this side of the body is going to be more Nordic themed. But since this is also a band, I thought, oh, well, that kind of fits. Don't have any regrets. It's my first. It wasn't the best. The only regret I really have is it's very big, and it's not very interesting to look at. Um... You know, um, but you know what? Great thing is, go to an artist and we can probably fix it up, add a few things and make it more, uh, which is fair. My second one was, this is going to be hard to show, was that one, which is Odin's Horns, which is a more um, symbolic sort of uh, tattoo, which is basically based around um, when you're in a brotherhood and when you make a word up, not, not make a word up, you know, when you put your word as an oath, you don't want to break it, you know, when you've locked in a more sentimental value with a person or your ideologies. Like, if I say to you, I'm going to get this done, I promise, then I've got to keep that promise on Odin's horns, you know. To me, that helps me stay more focused, stay more obtuned with people, and my word as an oath, you know. My word is my word, and it is very strong, and this Odin's horns really helps me kind of stick to it, and it's good. If I say to myself, all right, I'm going to go do a workout on Odin's horns, my brain's just like, well, you got to do it now because you've, you've, you know, you've done it. You know, you've you set yourself for it because you've got to do it. You know, you your word is your word, sort of deal. So that's what that means, and that's really good because that's what the sort of person I am. If I give you my word, there's a very high chance I will not break it. Like there's like a one percent chance, and that's usually if there's other um, parameters that I can't control. So that's that one. My next one was this one, which was the Tall Eye, which is very, well, Tall is one of my favorite bands, and it's also very Alex Gray, because um, I also love Alex Gray, and I just love it. It's vibrant, it's colorful, I always love color in my tattoos, always wanted one that was full color. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I absolutely loved it, and it's one of my favorite ones. Means a lot, obviously. Tool got me through a lot of hardships when I was growing up in high school and stuff, and even now it still does. Um, and Alex Gray, it's very eye-opening, eye very mind-opening. I love Lateralis. I love it all. So, yeah. And I'm probably going to get more Alex Gray tool art, because to me that's his best art. And Alex Gray in general is just an amazing artist. And if you're a very spiritual person and very out there, give him a go. Just saying. <laughs> And then my next one is my latest one, and um, that's down there, and well, this is what it is. So yeah, pretty badass. Um, it's based around Megadeth. I finally saw the Megadeth um, earlier this year. I've now seen the big four. I am very happy. But Megadeth for me is one of my favorite thrash bands, but also it means a lot, you know. This is one of those tattoos where it's music-based, but there's also that theme and mentality to it. Because in the end, when you see somebody with tattoos, there's a very, very high chance that what you see is the sort of person they are, good or bad. For me, you know, you see all these and you ask them what it's about. This one is all very interesting. So it's, it looks freaking metal as hell, which is a good thing because I do love metal, obviously. It's also very um, black metal, death metal, very Lovecraftian. If you see that, you're going to go, wow, that's amazingly detailed and stuff, but also it's just very paranoid kind of the person I am where I'm very out there and very lovable, but also like, it, I just love a whole lot of stuff. You know, if you say to me, oh man, that's very thrash, or that's very black, or that's very dark, that's very metal, I'd be like, oh, this is the inspiration for it. But it's a lot more than that. Like on the surface, it's a very good art piece and I love it. But then there's a bit more to it where it's like, Growing up, thrash metal in general um, got me through a lot of things as well, you know. I'm a thrash head. I love thrash metal. Thrash metal just gives me energy. It gets me going. And that's something that I just can't stop. Like, thrash metal is one of my favorite subgenres of metal ever. And I've had a lot of good times. I've met a lot of good people. have a lot of great memories. And that kind of symbolizes all of that. And when I look at it, I remember all these great times. I remember the first time I went to a concert, I saw Lemma God and Metallica. Um, I remember the first time I saw Slayer in the pit. Anthrax, where I'm pretty sure Joey was like, yo, you're pretty cool, even though I was screaming my ass off like right at the front of the pit, <laughs> but it was great, you know, I just have that sensibility of it all where I'm just like, 
this is all my grey memories and it's just a very good art piece in itself. Now, you're probably wondering though, my variations of how I clean them and how I go about basically making them look very nice and pretty and very vibrant. Well, this is it. First of all, get yourself some Sanadome. This is actually came today because um, my ideology is this. If your artist has Sanadome, get to put it on the first day and see if you can take one home. If you can't or if your potato artist does not have Sanadome, buy some yourself. They're fairly cheap. This was like $58, I think, for a relatively big one. It's not the biggest one they have, but you can always cut it up and use separate pieces, which is what I recommend. For any big pieces, cut it and use various, like, double the pieces on it, which just makes it stay corrected more. For things like this, you just need one piece and you're basically fine. Um, whether or not they send you with a chubby chub, I'm not sure, but hey, I got a free chubby chub. I ain't saying no to that. So, how do I go and do it? So there's technically two ways to do it, realistic, and this is how I've done it. Of course, you do it differently, it's your skin, it's always different, and obviously, if your tattoo ass tells you differently, go with what they say. But what I do is I, it's all done, you wait about 30, 40 minutes after your tattoo is finished and it's all clean, right, right. You get your sanodome on, your tattoo artist will do it, great. And you leave it on. And that's basically it. You leave it on for between 24 hours. They do say 24 hours you should leave it on because then it like all the, the blood and all the, the, the ink and stuff comes out, right? Which is good. It can also help heal your wounds and stuff and make it heal a bit better. Great. Cool. Bloody beautiful. Now, I leave mine on between 24 and 36. It varies because when I leave it longer, I've got more. I've got to have more time to kind of let it settle in. So if I do it for 36 hours or less, I've got to make sure that I've got the time when I get up to, to do it all. So you can do it for 24 hours, but I do it for a bit longer. Um, and then what I do is in the morning, I just go and have a warm shower, not hot shower, just a warm shower. And I slowly peel it off. And then I just wash it with antibacterial soap about three times, two to three times. Um, you know, just rub it in there, let it soak for a bit and then wash it off and then do it again and again. Um, depends on who you are. You can do it twice, you can do it once, you can do it three times. I just like to be sure. When it's done, get paper towel when I'm out and um, I pat it down. Now, before you pat it down, this is the best thing I think, this is one of the best advice I ever got is, after you've had a warm shower, run your tattoo and your newly done tattoo with that under cold water because all of your pores will slope up and it will just hold in the ink a lot more, which is something that I've done and it helps a lot. Obviously with the Sanoderm, it's better to do it after you take it off the first time because it's still healing, which is, yeah, makes it better. You can do it afterwards after you've done the whole week, but I think it makes more sense to do it, you know, straight afterwards or after you take the Sanoderm off for the first time. So once you've done that, you pat it down and then you let it air dry. Once it's air dried and you can, you will tell, trust me, once you've air dried it, after it's had Sanoderm on, probably even like eight hours or so, you will see the complete difference and it will feel like the Sahara Desert, which is great. Because once that's done, you get your moisturizer, you get your, your like I use Hustle Butter, which is this stuff. This is a small one. Um, I've ordered a big one. You can order big ones. And the great thing is this isn't just for tattoos. You can use this for your skin normally. So if you're someone who hasn't got many tattoos or isn't going to get any many, many tattoos, this stuff works for you. And even if you are going to get more tattoos, this stuff is just great in general for everything. And it's really good for your skin in general. So I highly recommend it for just that. And obviously tattoo care. So once it's all dried and stuff, I then grab that. Now, I like to do the dabbing one. You can, you know, you can squiggle it around if you want. But um, I feel like if it gets, like, because it can be a bit err uh, and just a bit veiny and a bit weird feeling, dabbing it. So you can either dab it like the footage shows on your leg or the, the, the site and then you just tap it down or you can put them on your fingers and your hand and then do it like that. Either way it works. But you just slowly slap it down, which it helps more when you take it off after the week. So once you've done that and it's soaked in, if you use too much of it, of this or whatever you use, you let it soak in for about 20 minutes, maybe more, really depends who you are. And then you damp off the with a paper towel the excess. Once you've done that, wash your hands and make sure you've got everything off your hands because now you're going to use the Sanoderm. Do it normally, cut it and stuff, and then you put it on. But I've had this happen where I've had residue on my fingers and the sticky substance just does not stick, which means I had to go use another one, another one. So be warned, if you're going to use Sanoderm, make sure that your hands are fine and there's, you know, your tattooed area is just golden. Now, 
I do it the first time. You don't have to necessarily put more of this on. It, I've just started doing that because it makes it feel a bit easier and makes it feel a bit more relaxed over the time when it heals over the next week. Um, that's what I recommend. Again, up to you. You do you. You don't have to put anything on if you don't want to before, after the shower and before you put the Sanoderm on. I just like to do it and I think it works. It just feels a bit better to me. But hey, you do you. And then you put the Sanoderm on and you leave it for a, well, you can leave up to six days if you did the 24 hour. If you do the 36 ish hour, you can you, you can wear it for like five days and just a little bit over, right? Overall, you can wear Sanoderm for up to a week up to a week and then you want to take it off. Granted, if your skin is very, um, gets reactive with adhesive, take it off as soon as it starts to get reactive. But um, usually, usually by the second time, you know, you're fine. You're used to it. You're all good. So yeah, you put it on and you leave it at that and it helps, as you'll see. The photo you see now is when the tattooers finally finished it. The next photo you see now is when I took the sanitizer off after 36 hours and I put some hustle butter over it. And what you see now footage is basically today where I took the rest of the sanitizer off, let it dry out, cleaned it down, and then I put my back on it. And um, it's pretty damn good. It heals very, very well. And I think it does a great job. And I think sanitizer just gets rid of all the bullshit. There's no leaking of plasma and stuff on the bed, although if you don't put it on properly, that can happen, which is why if it does happen, you can put some tape underneath the areas where it's gonna spill out. And if you think water's gonna get underneath it, you can put clean wrap around and then tighten up the clean wrap so no water gets into your leg area or the sanitum. If you do it properly, your sanitum's usually fine, but if you want precautions, you can do that. And yeah. Once it's all done, you are healed pretty damn well. There is no issues. I, th I think literally there's just, it's perfect. It's literally perfect. And um, yeah, I just, yeah. I think this is the best way to go. Um, it gets rid of all like, you know, itchy and stuff. You get itchy and you, but you just slap it, but it's not bad. It doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel like, if I was to compare the itchiness of wearing Sanoderm to without Sanoderm, I'd rather Sanoderm. I had one moment of being itchy with Sanoderm and about a million moments without it. There's no irritation. You don't feel like if you go to bed, you're moving around. It's just scraping across things because, again, this is another skin. It protects it. makes it so much better. And, yeah, it just feels pretty good. Make sure, though, if you do go over where the tattoo is to make sure it's more connected in, that you shave your leg hairs or your arm hairs or any hairs in general because when you take it off, it will hurt. And when you do take it off, take it slowly. Warm water, not hot water. Warm water. And once your tattoo is done, run under cold water. Um just because it helps suck it all in. And that's it. Yeah, it, it's, it, this is the best stuff to have and I freaking love it and I'm just, that's why I buy my own. And even if you're someone that's going to get much tattoos or think, oh, I can keep it for later on, which you can, this can still be used for stuff like cuts and burns anyway. If you're out and about and you somebody cuts and you've got no band-aids or anything, you can use Sanoderm. It was mainly made for, this stuff was made for um, that, cuts and um, burn victims, if I remember correctly. And now it's just used for um, tattoos, but you can still use it for all of that stuff. So if you're somebody that knows you're not going to get many tattoos, or you are, you've got many reasons to use this in general and to grab them in general as well. Another thing to do is, if your tattooers doesn't have it and they just put clean wrap on. Usually with clean wrap, you leave it on for four to eight hours, give or take, depends who you are. And you just wash it normally. Warm water, wash it, cold water, done. And then you basically put on Sanoderm like you normally would, like I, you know, what I just said. You just put the Sanoderm like normal. You can leave Sanoderm if it doesn't fill up with, like, you know, plasma and blood and all that ink and stuff, and it's not too much. You can leave it on for the full week if you're lucky. If not, you might have to take it off again and put it back on. But for the most part, that's completely fine because the healing it does just works so much better than normal. And, um... Well, yeah, that's kind of it. That's what I've used for my tattoos. That's what my meanings are behind my tattoos. And I love the new one. I've got another one lined up whenever my artists can get to it. So, um, yeah, that's Aussie Viking out. That's how I, uh, well, that's how I heal my tattoos. And of course, there's a million different ways to do it. Um, that's just how mine has been done. And mine's worked pretty damn well for me, at least. So, um, yeah, give it a go. Rock and roll. And I shall see you all in Valhalla.